Welcome everybody to the Red G Fox channel. All right. Thank you for joining us today. So I just want to say, I hope you had a happy, enjoyable Easter with family, friends, a neighbor. Sometimes it's so hard in life. If you know, you lose family, you lose friends as we get older or even younger, you can lose people tragically. And we'll cover someone in today's episode that actually had their life cut short, unfortunately. But you know, that's why I always treasure these times with family and friends. Take advantage of every moment you have and love them to the fullest. I had a great time with my family and close friends yesterday for Easter. So thank you very much um, for joining us today. I just wanted to open up the show with that. That being said, today is the one of my favorites of season two, but we have a fun fact about it. It's not everyone else's favorite. And that is the kid, yes. Now in this one, quick summary about it is basically Lamont is doing his rounds. He comes home and someone, a kid, I think he's nine, sneaks aboard the truck and he's under the tarp. And now he gets to spend the whole day hanging out with them, regardless of how much Fred does not want him around there. But it, in the end, he ends up missing him. And we'll cover that in this episode breakdown today. So before we get going into the episode breakdown, let's get to some fun facts and familiar faces. Fun fact. With this one, now there's not a lot. We only have one. Unfortunately, I hate that. And it's it's more of an interesting fact. They didn't have anything where you're like, hey, I didn't know that. But this is something you might learn. The Kid in season two is the lowest rated episodes. What is it? IMBD gives it 7.1. Now I kept thinking it was 6.9. I was wrong about that, but it is 7.1. That shows how good the season is. Everything was seven or higher. But The Kid is the lowest rated episode, but Ironically, the following week when it was introduced in television history, Rated X debuted, and that was the highest of season two, and that was 8.4. So you went from the worst to the absolute best in back-to-back -back weeks. I just thought it was interesting uh, to hear that whenever you look at the ratings of the show. So that's our for unfortunately only fun fact. Let's get to familiar faces. We have Lincoln Kilpatrick Jr. That is the kid who plays Jason. I really like him. I think he's an outstanding actor. I couldn't look up and find out why he stopped acting because we'll find out what else he did besides this. But yeah, I think he's a great kid actor. That's something you don't see too often. And he has some great chemistry, I think, with Red Fox in this. But he went on to do, which many people have mentioned on this show to me and anyone else in the community, he was in an episode of Good Times. I guess he was a bully, something like that. But he was in Good Times. He was in Dead Men Tell No Tales. He also did The Name Game, or The Name of the Game. And something called Alexander, the Other Side of Dawn. That's a I never seen that movie, but when I looked into it in the summary, that's a very interesting and and it seems like a very uh, deep um, movie right there. If you ever look into that, but yeah, that is called the Alexander, the Other Side of Dawn. So that is it with him, with Lincoln Kilpatrick Jr. We also have Marlene Harris. Now Marlene Harris, she is Jason's mom. Very pretty woman. She was the age I want to say at this time she was. 40 years old when she was on this episode, which would mean Fred Red Fox was about, in real life, about, uh, I think, 50 or 49. He started around that age, and this is season two. So they're not that far apart, despite the show making it look like Fred is 65 and pretending almost like she's in her 30s. But unfortunately, the sad part of her, as we talked at the beginning, she died just three years after this at the age of 43, of course, of the, the much-hated cancer. Man, every time I see that, I you know, cancer is such... We all hate it. We all hate it. And it's so unfortunate to see someone cut their life short due to something like that. But yeah, 43, she passed away. Probably why she didn't really do anything else. I think she did, what else? One other thing. Late one afternoon. She did something. Here's a picture of it on here. But late one afternoon. But that's about it. Maybe as soon as her career got started, it didn't last very long, unfortunately, because she had to deal with the cancer that came in. So those are our two familiar faces in this. Smitty and Hoppy also make an appearance, but we've already covered them dozens of times. So that is it. Let's get to the breakdown. I bet you he's a short thief. Either that or he's a midget. And the one thing I hate is a midget who go around stealing for a living. All right, now I'm going to do my best to convince you. If you and I've seen people on here comment, you know, I think even share money. You even mentioned some of us have said, hey, you know what? It's it's not really their favorite, and I can see why because it, it it isn't. It is the lowest rated. But anything in the sevens, in my opinion, is that's good. That's a great uh, a good episode, not great. But it's one I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just me because I work with kids for over nine years and uh, I just enjoy kids. I got a bunch of them, you know, and I still grandkids as well. So it's just something to where I love kids. And in this episode, I can so see myself relating to everything going on. But 
as we start out, Lamont comes back, Fred comes in, and Fred was uh, playing a little bit of cards, you know, and then Lamont catches him. He's like, what's this? He's like, oh, you know, it's the, I love Fred when he does that too. When he thinks he's going to get away with it, you would think by now Lamont's not going to fall for it. But he's like, yeah, man, just working these books, man. It's hard handling these books. <laughs> Lamont's like, oh, really? Let me check. And he opens it. It's a deck of cards. And he's all, Fred's all, oh, bookmarks. Yeah, and Lamont's like, 52 of them. And, and he even says, he's like, come out and help me unload this. And I like how Fred's like, you know, this is still Sanford and Son, not Son and Sanford. You know, he's in charge. And I agree with that. Don't tell me what to do. Did you not what, remember what Olaia said? You respect your parents, you know? So they walk out and that's when they unload in the truck. And let's look at the scene. I love when they're breaking down uh, as they're taking stuff off the truck. It is pretty funny. What is that, galvanized iron? Yeah. Well, put it in the GI section. <laughs> GI for galvanized iron. Huh? Huff caps. You want me to put them in HC? Let me see. No, I'll put them in uh, GC. Garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like it still makes me laugh when Fred's like when he's doing it, he's all uh, GI galvanized iron. Then when he goes uh, GC garbage can. <laughs> Because I know Lamont wants to bring stuff back, but unless it's just straight up metal recycle, what are you going to do with that hubcap? That thing is hideous, and it has no purpose other than melting down and recycling. And then they get Jason. Jason comes out, and Lamont even says, he's like, what are you doing on here? And Jason's like, hey, I just I just wanted to come check it out. And Fred's like, no, you know what? Get out of here. And the kid, and Lamont, he's like, oh, I, can I just stay and play? And Lamont's like, yeah, go ahead. You can play. Let him go. And Fred's like, why did you why did you do that? You know what they, uh, a lawyer says? A junkyard is an attractive nuisance. And he learned that from, of course, Perry Mason. And he talks about Della Street, you know, good looking for a white woman. <laughs> I love when he does that. He talks about, I think he says that another time to Bubba in another episode. Comment below if you remember that. Am I right? Am I crazy? Or am I remembering that right? He does mention her um, in another episode uh, of, about Perry Mason and she being good looking for a white woman. So he comes back and he's going to, he remember he wants to hang out and he's going to sit down and, or Fred's like, get out of my seat. You can't stay here. But he lets him stay. He says, hey, can I stay for lunch? And Fred's like, no. And Lamont's like, yeah, c come on, Pop. You don't have a heart. So they go inside. And when they're going inside getting ready, Fred's like, yeah, you come with me. And Lamont goes upstairs to wash up. And that's when he goes in there and he's all, this is this is, this is what I'm saying. There's so much good material from Fred in this. Let's look what Fred says to uh, to Jason about washing your hands. And you should always wash before you eat. Good. You're always supposed to wash your hands every time before you eat. Uh, and from the looks of you, you should have the cleanest hands in your block. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's not that big. He is a little chunky. But he's, Fred makes it sound like he's big. But yeah, it is a good line when he's like, oh, clean his hands on the block. <laughs> and so now he's talking about what he's going to have. And it's the chicken. And he's like deciding he likes the next. And Fred probably... You can tell Fred has motives. He wants the next. And he's like, maybe I can get him to take a back. Because I think there was three necks and four backs. So he's like, take him back. And he tells him the great story. Like, if you swallow it, you can get a, a bone in there. And then you can get a chicken neck. And he, so now he's scared. You know, and that's how kids are. They're honest. And they're they're gullible. They'll believe what, they, what you say. And Fred convinces him. Then Lamont comes back in. And before then, Lamont goes out. Or Fred goes and talks to Lamont. And let's see what he has to say about... Um, what he doesn't want this to turn into. Some more, and then the next day some more, and then pretty soon it'll be some more. That's how Boys Town got started. <laughs> Come on, yeah. I'm Papa Sanford, not Father Flanagan. Yeah, he's not no, uh, what is it, Papa Flanagan. He's, he doesn't want that, doesn't want to turn into Boys Town. They come back inside, and now Lamont is being nice. He's like, hey, what did you want? And he's like, oh, I'll take a back. And he's like, don't you want a neck? He said, yeah, but I don't want to end up with a, a, a chicken neck. And of course, he's like, who told you that? And he's all, your, uh, your dad. Then he tells the great story about the, the, it, the one guy who ate the chicken, um, the neck, and then the other guy who ate the other end of the chicken. Let's see what he says. Because he's saying, I love that part when he's like, oh, the bone, you know, he, he ate chicken bone so much his neck was so thin that his wife could choke him with one hand. And it's such a good line because you get the visual, right? You can see this guy with the skinny neck getting choked out. And even Lamont, I like when they show Lamont right here, you can see him. He's laughing and he even says, he's like, stop, you know, like he's busting up because it is funny. But then what happens when he says, what happens to your face when you eat the other end of the chicken? Because whatever you eat is what you're going to turn into. Exactly. I said that to me. You don't need it. <laughs> Fred's face. But he's making it like that. And Lamont, I love what he's all. I said, stop. So he stops. And then and then remember one other scene. Oh, I forgot. I got to put this in. Um, 
Let's look at this. This is such a good line, too, when Fred's trying to promote him. He's like, hey, what would you like to drink? You want a beer? And Lamont's like, he can't drink beer. And why can? Why does Fred think a kid can drink beer? Pop, children do not drink beer. What's wrong with that? It just got some barley and some grain and stuff in it. You know, just, just cornflakes in a can. <laughs> it's just cornflakes in a can. And every time I hear it, I go, you know, it is true. But we know what, I mean, Fred's just, he's trying to simplify it, but you can't do that. So rightfully so, Lamont does not let him have any beer and as he's tasting, he likes it, remember? And then he's like, man, this is really good. Jason really likes it. He's like, you're a great cook, Mr. Sanford. And you can see he's honest. Like I said, this is why I love kids. They're honest and they'll be, they'll tell you straight up. There's, he's not, he's not trying to pull the wool over Fred's eyes. He's not like an adult would be like, hey, you know, trying to have a motive. He just straight up said, hey, you're a great cook. This is really good. It's the best he's ever had. And now Fred's like, he feels so good inside. He's like, you know what? Here, here, why don't you take a neck? Just don't get none of the bones. And I love that. I love that Fred opens up. He starts to actually like the kid at that, you know, at that time because he's, he could see, hey, you know what? The kid really likes something and it feels good. It feels good to have, you know, other people around and hear people compliment because you know Lamont's not giving those compliments. So Fred likes that. And then you hear the, the rumble and he's like, oh man, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. This is probably my favorite line in the entire episode. I've quoted it in so many different shows. We talk about it. I even made, uh, I think, a YouTube short we have on our channel about it. But what causes thunder? And Lamont, rightfully so, tells him, you know, the terms you want to know. It's it's electricity in the atmosphere. It's making that rumble. It's making the, the noise from it. And he's scared. And Fred's like, why do you want to scare him, man? Why do you want to scare him? And I love Lamont. He's like, okay, okay, what causes uh, thunder? What causes thunder? And Fred's <laughs> answer is so good. There, let's hear it right here. Well, it's uh, thunder. So that's a uh, black angels tap dancing. <laughs> such a visual of like people dancing black black angels dancing making the thunder it's such a good line and it, the, just the de delivery of fred too you know we know they had great writers but not any actor could pull it off but just fred how he kind of stalls and just like he's thinking about it and then he just makes it up on the fly and it's so funny and yeah so after he says that he's they're eating they're enjoying the time and he says that and that's when he's like oh you know i don't want to go home can i stay the night and fred's like no no. And every time Lamont, no, he's cutting him off. And he's like, will you just stop? Will you just listen? And they talk about how he's, hey, you got to get home. And it's true. And he's like, well, my mom's working. And he's like, what about your father? I don't have a dad. So he's got no dad. It's a single parent home. And you're thinking, you know what? This is a different day and age. Nowadays, they'd probably be arrested or something ridiculous. But they're just looking out for him. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, you can stay the night. And Fred does not want it. He's like, hey, can you go close that window? You know, oh, it's raining. We don't need that window open. Go out there. So he goes to close it, and that's when Fred's like, hey, I am not Conrad Hilton. You know, I don't want this kid staying here. But Lamont's like, what are you, Simon Legree? And he's like, we, we just let him. It's one night. You know, we don't want him to go home alone. You can't let him take off home alone. So Lamont, it, surprising that Lamont is so for it. You know, I understand why, but he's really pushing for it. And then Fred's like, you know, he gives in. He's like, whatever. Okay, what's he going to do? You know, so he'll let him stay. He already had dinner. Let him stay. It's almost like Gus. You had your continental breakfast. You know, you got you got to sleep. Now get a checkout time. But the difference here, Fred doesn't want uh, his name just escaped me. He doesn't want him to to Jason. I, I kept wanting to call him Jack. He doesn't want Jason to take off the next day. So he comes in, and I love this part when he comes in. The Fred's reaction when he's like, "Let's look at it right here." <laughs> I love that the way Fred's like. He's all it's, they're closed, Mr. Sanford. Fred's like. He makes that face. It's very, I like that. It's basically Fred just like trying to be nice. Like, oh, thank you. But he, you can see he's not happy. We see the next day and Lamont's gone and Fred is playing poker with him and he loses, right? Right. Fred thinks he's got the hand and the kid's got four kings. So Fred's having bad luck and it's now he owes him, I think, 620, 650. It's over 600 bucks. He owes him. And Fred's like, let's try a new game. And you know, like I said, kids are gullible. Fred does a game where he deals cards and he's got seven and Jason's got five. And so Fred technically made back 200 or no, 400 from the bets um, with the Annie and the $100 bet. So he made back some money, but Jason doesn't write it down because he hears the truck in Lamont's home and he tries to, to clean it up real quick. And he comes in and he's like, oh, that's what you're doing, playing poker all day. And he's like, no, nah, I was just playing cards with him, teaching him poker. So the mods are happy. He's like, hey, he was supposed to go home. We got to get your phone number, Jason. You got to get out of here, which is true. At this stage, I'm glad even Lamont's like, hey, you've been here. You stayed the night. Your mom is probably worried sick when she got home. So we got to get you home. And he's refusing to give the phone number. He doesn't want to go home. He's enjoying it too much there. And Fred even says, hey, you know what? Uh, I'll let you come over any time, but I'm not going to let you come back and be my poker buddy. And so he's like, all right. And he's going to give the phone number. And then we get a knock and it's Smitty and Hoppy. 
We are going to get it to the point where people can walk anywhere in Los Angeles. Yeah, they still be running in watch. And they're just there to check because remember Lamont mentioned something about it. So they're there and I love um, Smitty, let's, or no, Hoppy. Let's look at Hoppy's line when he says when he first meets the kid, he wants to reassure him, hey, everything's okay. Man in blue is a friend to you. Uh, be cool, little brother. The fuzz is your cuz. <laughs> I like that. And I love Smitty when he's like, the, uh, the, keep it cool, you know, the fuzz is your, is your cuz. Like, hey, it's cool. We're cops. We're good, we're good guy cops. You don't have to worry about us. So they're nice. And then they're when they're trying to talk to him about saying, hey, uh, we're just here to check on it. We just want to know where you live, what's your phone number. We want to make sure you, there's no trouble, no runaway. You can actually see the door if you pay attention. He sneaks out. So when he takes off, then they're like, oh, you scared him. And they're like, hey, don't worry. We'll go get him. He's like, they're going to go out and they're, they're going to go out and they're going to go look for him. And then I love uh, Hoppy. Let's let's do Hoppy's face. I love right before he takes off what he says. Well, so long, father. Brother. 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 <laughs> Man, I never get tired of Smitty correcting Hoppy when he tries to be cool and mess up on things. So they're gone. And now they go back out there. And I love when they're trying to look for him. And you can see the they probably, the director's probably like, hey, shift around a little. But Jason's shifting around a bunch like he's doing a hula hoop. And Fred finds him. And he comes on out and he, he's like, hey, you got to tell us your number. And he goes, okay. And they go back inside and they're going to get the number. Then Smitty and Hoppy come again, or they hear the car and they look out the window and they're like, it's the back. And he tries to take off. Jason tries to take off. And in comes his mother. And she's like, Jason, I was worried so much about you. Smitty and Hoppy are like, hey, she called. This is why we're looking for her. And she wanted to, uh, we wanted to help her find her son. So he hugs his mom. He's happy. And it all turns out that he was supposed to go to his aunt's house and stay the night. But he didn't call his aunt, he didn't call his mom, he never went home, checked in even the next day. So she was really naturally worried. But it all well that ends well, the police take off. Remember I love when he's like, oh, we were playing poker, he owes me 600 bucks. And what does Hoppy say? Well, you better pay up. <laughs> <laughs> the way he says that, the way he just does it, he's all serious and then he, or joking and then he gets all serious afterwards. But then they're done and then right, at, right when they're gonna take off, Fred's like, no, no, stay and have something to eat. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, can we stay uh, necks and gizzards and uh, feet? What they're going to have. And he's all, no, legs and thighs. Because <laughs> he's checking out uh, Jason's mom. And even Lamont, remember, he's like, hey, Lamont, take him outside. And you know, kind of show him the, the garage, out of the junkyard. And Lamont's like, ah, I see it right there. You can see the way he does that. So he's going to go right there. He knows exactly what his dad's thinking. And then they walk in there and she even gets a grin. So it would have been cool. You know, maybe I'm mean, like, think about it. I was watching this one with my uh, two, uh, two youngest kids, the youngest boys. And I was like, look, think about that. He could have had a, a new dad and uh, a new brother in one marriage if Fred had just uh, tried to go out with her and marry her. That would have been cool. He's instantly got a big brother and a dad. So, but it didn't happen that way. At the end, we see, you know, they stayed for dinner. They're gone. The next day... Fred Lamont sees uh, Fred. He's looking out the window, kind of sad, and he's like, "You know, I, I miss. You know, it's nice having a son, uh, a young son around. You know, I, I wish we had that." And Lamont's like, "Wait a minute, uh, you know, I'm, I'm your son. I'm here." And he's like, "Yeah, but you know, it's different, and it is." And I was telling my kids when we were watching. I'm like, "You know, it's so true. One's 12, the other one's 14. I'm like, once you reach that stage, those stages are gone. And and Jason's nine, and I remember." six, seven, eight, nine, they're all stages and you have different fun things you do with them and it's great, but you can't go back to those stages. So that's why even with the Mon, it's like, I see my kids there. We don't do the same things there. It's, you do different things, right? Now he's going out. Now Fred's spending time with the Mon. Man, he can go get chicks, right? <laughs> Fred can go get chicks with them. But he's sad right there and he's like, hey, you know, hey, don't worry about it, Pop. You know, it's it's cool. Jason's fun. It'll be fine. You might still see him again. And then Jason comes in and Fred's all, yeah, hey, Jason, he's all excited. And he says, oh, remember, Mr. Sanford, you said that I can always come by and uh, play. And he's like, yeah, sure, anytime. And so he's all, come on, guys. And all the kids run in. And it's exactly what Fred said. Don't feed them because they're like cats. They'll keep coming back and hanging out. The kids do. He said, I'm not Father Flanagan. He is like Father Flanagan. The whole place is full of kids going crazy. Lamont and Fred are both going nuts trying to stop it. It gets chaotic. It's a great ending. Very funny ending. That's why when I watch it, I go, there's never a dull moment to me. I never watch it. And it's, it's obviously... Uh, like I said, not bad. Uh, comment below. I don't think anyone here doesn't like the episode. It's just like how there's episodes where I go, hey, you know what? I like that one, but it's I'm not I'm not putting that in the top of my list if I'm about to stream an episode. And I feel that this one, the kid, when I got to this for this to episode breakdown, I was excited. Last week, potluck. It's not one of my favorite. It's rated higher, but I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I was excited to do the kid, and I'm very very excited next week to do Rated X. I cannot wait to get to that. That is a top 10 episode 100%.
But before then, like I said, I like this episode. Uh, if it was up to me rating for my personal scale, I would give it like a 7.6. I really like it. Now, remember, I'm more generous. Next week, I think Rated X is 8.4. I would give that a 9. I'm like, it is. I don't know why it's not. You know, they never give a 9 because the rating system is based off some fans. Who knows what they think? But that's it with Rated... Uh, not Rated X. That's it with the kid. Uh, comment below if you enjoyed this episode. If you if you haven't seen it in a while and you're like, yeah, or you don't like kids, you won't like this episode. But if you do, go back and give it a watch because I promise if you pay attention to just how great Jason is as an actor, but as as the person that he is as a kid, how he's he's innocent, he's gullible, um, he's honest, everything that's great about kids uh, that, that I love. That's why I was like, yeah, it's a great one. So thank you very much. Continue to subscribe if you're new. If you're already a, mem a subscriber, thank you for being part of this community. Comment, give a like if you enjoyed any part of this video. And have a great week. I hope you had a great Easter. Comment below if you had a great Easter. And then look forward to this Friday. Is Tomorrow will be actually today We uh, when I post this. This is where we're doing um, round two. We have the winner of round one. At this moment, it should have been uh, Jealousy with Osgood Wilcox. And then we will have round two coming up. So look for that today if you're watching this video on a Tuesday. It will be up sometime today. But have a great week. Safe week. Uh, enjoy life wherever you're at. Hopefully everything's positive. Talk to you guys again soon. Peace.